If you've ever had to uncompress a file, then there are lots of programs out there that can accomplish that. Most of them are paid. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you today what I feel is the best, and it's completely free and trustworthy. Now, the most popular program for unzipping is WinZip. Unfortunately, over the years, they've, in my opinion, introduced a lot of bloatware into their software, and plus, it is a licensed and paid program. Now, the next most popular one, in my opinion, is WinRAR. Uh, now, WinRAR, again, is paid software. You can download a trial of it again compared to 7-zip 7-zip just has a lot of options and everything is free so to download 7-zip just come on over to 7-zip.org and if you click on download here and yes there is you know the download on the main page but if you come to download over here you can select even for uh, Mac if you have a Mac uh, you've got the 64-bit uh, and 32-bit versions for Windows and if we go ahead and scroll on down you can actually see there are downloads for Linux as well so now let's go ahead and download it and install it real quick. Coming up here, I'll click on the 64-bit download. Go ahead and save that, and then just click on it and hit yes at the prompt. Go ahead and click on install and close. It is literally that fast to install. Now to show you how to go ahead and use it is if you have a 7-zip file or even just a regular zip file, on Windows 10, if you right click on it, it actually has a open with 7-zip. But here with Windows 11, you gotta go down to show more options or just hit Shift and F10. And now here is the context menu for 7-zip. Now, if you go ahead and extract here, then it will go ahead and place the file directly inside of the downloads folder, which is where I have the 7-zip file located at. To make things a little bit more organized, you can go ahead and and say extract to, and it will go ahead and have the folder name of the same as what your file is named that is zipped up. So if I click on that, it now went ahead and created a folder that has the contents of the zip file. Now you can notice the file size here is five kilobytes. And when I come into here, I actually have a readme text file that is almost 1.8 megs. So if I go ahead and double click on it, there we go. Now, if I wanna go ahead and zip this up, I'm going to go ahead and right click on it, show more options or shift F10, come over to 7-zip. And if I say add to archive, then this will bring up a menu here. Now in this menu, we can go ahead and change the name of the file. And you can also see all the different archive formats that are available. This time I'm going to go ahead and just select zip so that you can see the difference in compression. I'm going to keep the compression level uh, the same, which is nine and ultra, and then just go ahead and hit okay. And now that zip file is 17 kilobytes. And if we look at the 7-zip instance of it, it is 5 kilobytes. So to me, this is one of the reasons why I really like 7-zip is that for most use cases, you can save a considerable amount of space when compressing things, but it depends on the data that is actually being compressed, so your mileage will vary with different containers. Now, I hope you found this video useful, and consider subscribing, and I will catch you in the next one.